Hello everyone, my name is Ariana Lopez and I am a Senior Partner Solution Architect with AWS. And today I'm going to show you how to create a private VPC endpoint for AWS IoT Core Credential Provider. This video is a follow-up to another video series that I did called How to Use a Proxy Server to Connect to Public Endpoints for AWS IoT Greengrass Version 2. So this is the agenda for today. First thing I want to do is briefly go over the previous video series that I did because it feeds into this video. Then we will discuss what is AWS IoT Core Credential Provider. Then we'll do a quick overview of authentication and how it works for AWS IoT Greengrass version 2. And then we will highlight some of the changes that need to be made to the environment that we created in the previous video series. So as I stated earlier, I had created a video series called How to Use a Proxy Server to Connect to AWS Public Endpoints, specifically when you're using AWS IoT Greengrass version 2. Now, in that series, we built a lot of things. One of the things we did was we created the entire environment, including the VPC, the subnet, security groups, IAM roles, proxy server, Greengrass device, as well as Route 53 private hosted zones. But the main goal was to set up a Greengrass device with minimal internet connectivity. We used a proxy server in that example to interact with public AWS endpoints, specifically the AWS IoT Core Credential Provider endpoint, because at that time, AWS IoT Core Credential Provider only had a public endpoint. But as of late October 2023, AWS IoT Core Credential Provider now supports a private endpoint. And so in this video, I want to show you how to configure your AWS VPC to use the private endpoint for AWS IoT Core Credential Provider. So what exactly is AWS IoT Core Credential Provider? Well, it allows you to use the built-in X509 certificate uh, on your device as the unique device identity to authenticate AWS requests. And so this will eliminate the need to store uh, the access key ID and a secret access key on your device. So for our example, in our previous video, we created a Greengrass device. And on that device, we created an X509 certificate. And so with that X509 certificate, we're able to use that and give it to our core credential provider for authentication to AWS. And so to elaborate on that a little more, let's briefly go through the authentication and how it works for Greengrass version two. I'm not going to get very detailed into this as we covered it in our in my previous video. Uh, so if you want a step by step on this, please visit that video. Uh, but this one, I'm probably only going to talk about the first three steps. So with Greengrass and how it authenticates, you, you create your AWS IoT Greengrass device, you put an IoT certificate on that device. And then if it wants to do a call to AWS, what's going to happen is it's going to request a security token. And as part of that request, it's going to include the device X509 certificate for authentication. So we'll send that request, AWS IoT Core Credential Provider will receive the request. It will then forward that request to AWS IoT Authentication Authorization Module, and then it will validate the certificate and verify that the device has permission to request the security token. Um, and then in that case, if the certificate is valid and has permission to request a security token, the AWS IoT Core Authentication Authorization Module will return success. And then uh, after successfully validating the certificate, the credential provider will invoke an AWS Security Token Service, also known as STS, uh, to assume the IAM role that you created for it. So that is where the AWS IoT Core Credential Provider comes into play. And that is what we are going to create a VPC endpoint for. So in the previous video series with how to use a proxy server to connect to public endpoints, this is what we initially created in that environment. And you can see at the bottom of the slide where we have the authentication authorization, the credential endpoint. Well, with this new update with a credential endpoint um, supporting a private endpoint, we are going to make a few changes. So you can see we've removed the public endpoint. Authorization authentication is still going to happen. However, it's going to happen in the AWS side. Um, and so here you'll see at the bottom of the left, 
we now have IoT core credential provider endpoint, and then it's going to talk to that service. And then the other thing we'll need to add is another Amazon Route 53 private hosted zone for that credential provider um, DNS name. So those are the two biggest changes we're going to make today. So let's go ahead and build. All right, so I am in my console. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go over to VPC. We're going to select that and we are going to create our VPC endpoint. To do that, you're gonna to look to the left and then we're gonna scroll until you get to endpoints. Click on that. And what we're going to do is create a new endpoint. And so we're gonna click on the button to the right. All right, so I'm gonna name this credential provider. All right, so it's credential provider endpoint. Service category will be AWS services. We're gonna scroll down. Uh, under services, we're going to type in credentials. All right, so you can see here we have, uh, as you can see here, we have service name, credentials. This is the one we want. So select that. Here we're going to select our VPC. Again, we will select our Greengrass version two POC VPC. Look at additional settings. Right now, the credential provider does not support uh, enabling private DNS name. So we are going to have to create a private hosted zone in Route 53. So we're gonna leave this as is for now. Now for subnets, we're going to select both uh, 2A and 2B, and we want to select the private endpoints. All right, and for our security group, we are going to look for our endpoints. It'll be the last one. And we will select create endpoint. Okay, so that one is now created. We will scroll down and there it is. So now that that's created, the next thing we have to do is actually go in our terminal, our local terminal. So what I'm going to do is bring up my terminal And what we want is our credential provider. So the command that we want to run is AWS IoT describe endpoint. Endpoint type will be the credential provider. I have my AWS credentials already on my machine. So I have a profile set up that has my information in it. And so I'm using that profile. And then we have our region, which we are specifying we are in US East 2. So I will press enter. And this is our endpoint. This is our credential endpoint. We need this DNS name for when we do our Route 53 uh, entry. And so that is what we're going to do next. And so in the console, we will look up Route 53. Click on that. Click on hosted zones and we are going to create a hosted zone. And so the domain name is going to be what we just got out of our terminal for a credential endpoint. So I'm going to paste that in. That is what I have. We are going to create a private hosted zone. And then for the region, US East 2, VPC, green grass, and we are going to create a hosted zone. All right, so the next step is we need to create a record. And so we are, we are going to leave this subdomain empty. The record type we want is an A record. Here we are going to click alias because we are going to now refer to the VPC endpoint we just created. So route traffic to click on the drop down, choose endpoint, alias to VPC endpoint, Choose the region, US East 2 again. And then we're going to choose our endpoint. So I'm gonna do a search. And I am going to take the top one. And then we're going to select create records at the bottom right. 
Okay, we are good here. So now that the hosted zone is created for our credential endpoint, what we're going to do is hop onto the proxy server and we are going to modify the filter file. Uh, but we will do that in the next video.